Hey guys, I'm here with Andrew from ProGrow Tech, and I told you guys that I would just bring you kind of the cream of the crop, you know, there's a lot of options out here, but um, not everybody's from our world, and by our world, I mean Andrew and I's world, <laughs> and you guys might remember Andrew, um, the Integrating Sphere video from 2014. Yeah, it's like, it feels like ancient history now. Yeah, yeah I gotta tell you, dude, um, you were the guy in that video, and before then, I was using lumens yep. as, a, as a good metric. So you're a lighting scientist, and you're from the world, our world. Like we care about micromoles. Yep. We care about coverage. We care about spectrum. So um, I'm gonna go behind the camera. Will you show us around your product? Tell yeah, us we'll a little bit about it. Yeah, we'd love to. Okay, cool. So uh, what we got here is the Evolve Series uh, LED solution. It's a complete integrated solution uh, going from clone which is a 155 watt unit here, uh, to VEG, which are the two fixtures underneath, which are 360 watts a piece, and then our Bloom units, uh, which are 700 watts a piece. Um, all of them feature industrial grade commercial construction. Uh, they're rugged, they're tough, uh, they stand up to a little bit of abuse. Um, onboard dimming and spectral control is standard on all of our units. They're fully waterproof. IP66 rated, uh, so you can spray them down with a pressure washer while they're on with absolutely no problem. Um, also, they feature a very large form factor. Uh, our veg and blooming units are four feet by four feet, a full four foot by four foot footprint. Um, and if you notice, the diodes are clustered on the edge of the bars to drive light to the absolute edges of the canopy. So our oh whole idea- Oh my gosh, dude, I hate to put in on you. <laughs> okay, I, you know, this was an un, un, unplanned. Yeah. I just, I came in here, yeah. I was gonna ask you some questions, I was gonna put you on the spot, and I was gonna ask you some hardballs yeah. to see how you responded. <laughs> the very first hardball was gonna be, when you're talking about uh, pretty sparse arrays, in terms of low diode density arrays, what are your thoughts about low par in the corners? Yep. No, I mean, you guys have combat combated this. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, I mean, that was the thing is like once we realized that, you know, LED was getting to a point where there was enough power if you deployed them right to be able to get full uh, enough intensity on canopy. The next thing was we wanted to eliminate hotspots. I mean, in a commercial facility, you want to be able to grow all of your plants on the same tray at the same rate so everything comes mature simultaneously. Uh, so that was kind of the, the main ideas behind the fixture and how we designed it. Um, and we've been getting the results. I mean, I'll show you. I don't know if this shows up on camera or not. I think we can get it. Yep. But how they are deployed, I mean, this is the over-the-top view. Um, it's a very narrow fixture, only about three inches. We're just using standard sun grips to mount them here, which is not the most artful solution. Um, but what you're seeing is, you know, really high-quality flower production. You know, we're seeing top canopy uh, that really exceeds the output of HPS. Like, this one's about the size of my arm here. Yeah. But you see how the fixtures are deployed, just absolutely edge to edge, creates an even blanket uh, canopy of light all the way across the top. About 950 PPFD at six inches, um, which is plenty of output, you know, anything beyond that, and we're really talking about plant stress. Uh, and the other kind of design feature is the full spectrum light source, uh, you know, the, the white quality of light. Um, it's more pleasant to work under, and we've saw, seen that uh, between like the old style purple LED, which we built by the way, the first yeah. fixture that we built was one of those. Uh, but at the same intensity levels, at the same PPFD, we're seeing about a 20% yield increase by switching to this more uh, full spectrum diode array. Sure, it's a white dominant product with a significant 660 bump is what it looks like to me. Correct, yeah, I mean, and we have actually a really heavy blue pump as well, um, but that's encased within our cool blue, or cool white LEDs rather. Can we um, go into that a little further? Sure. Now, this is kind of a, a friendly hardball. Okay. okay. And I asked you this question yesterday, 6,500 Kelvin LED are quite blue. They are. And it's a little bit of an unconventional approach in that most of my viewers are moving towards more of a 3K, 3,000 Kelvin. I've even seen some guys uh, throwing in 1750s and stuff. So, so this is not quite the departure from what myself and, and probably the people that are viewing this video you obviously have a significant customer base that is providing you with feedback and results. Mm -hmm. Can you expound just on the 6500K choice and the results that your customers can expect? Sure, so I would never build a fixture that was exclusively 6500K. Right. But I mean, it's well, instead of having, I mean, we still believe that having a, a strong blue pump at 450 nanometers, like where that chlorophyll A receptor is, is valuable. 
Um, but in lieu of having a discrete blue diode, we went with the 6500K, which is 75% 450 nanometer and about 25% 550 nanometer, which is green. So we're getting a small green contribution from the, six, uh, the 6500K, and it's paired with a 2700K diode. So that uh, kind of warm white color um, that's within the fixture is complementary to the 6500K. So being able to in veg, change that color temperature, create a, and you can tell uh, you know, the color temperature change on the, on the tray down there, giving, being able to have a bluer quality of light during veg, you know, a lot of people will clone under 6500K T5s, for instance, um, and then you know, start moving to a warmer quality of color temperature. But I mean, the combined color temperature of this fixture, when it's run neutral, like where all of the settings are the same, is about 4000K. So the 6500K doesn't overwhelm the Spectra, um, but it gives you uh, a color on your palette sure. to be able to create tighter, bushier, more stacked plants. Um, and also, the bluer quality of light uh, can help trigger that trichome production in the last couple of weeks. Like a lot of our growers will shift their spectrum cool to finish. Um, it's kind of similar to the theory behind using UVB to be able to generate, uh, you know, additional trichome production on the end of the on the end of a cycle. At the end of the day, to a plant, isn't a photon just a packet of energy? And there's nothing proprietary about what specific, like if it's a 452 or a or a, a 405. I mean, what are your thoughts there? I mean, you just explain express them, but yeah, I mean, I think that. It, the, the color temperature matters. I mean, I think there's no doubt about that. Sure. Um, you know, if, if you give a, a balance, what we've found um, is that if you give a, a balanced diet of photons to a plant, you can put more intensity on that plant. So if you have a, a light source that's more narrow, like a purple LED or a, a, an HPS fixture, you start getting to a certain intensity level and plant stress starts coming in. If you're able to spread that light over uh, the entire light spectrum, it can handle a higher intensity of light it can metabolize more of that light, um, and ultimately you get better results. You get higher yields, um, better cannabinoid profiles, better terpene profiles. Um, and really the, the difference, I think, and, and, but like you said, there's nothing proprietary about the light. I mean, being able to you know, d efficiently deliver the right quality and intensity of light, um, and I think what the breakthrough on our design is, it's just being able to give the feature set that the growers are looking for, spread that light out in a perfectly uniform pattern, um, and giving a rugged industrial tool um, with, like I said before, the feature set that people are looking for. And I think that's the difference between us and a lot of other lighting companies is we're lighting people, but we're also cannabis people. Like, you know, core principles of our team have been involved in the industry for a long time. I've been involved since 2009. Um, we understand from a voice of the customer standpoint what people are looking for in a design. I mean, we're also there to help them on the whole design build process to help them make good choices, not only on lighting, but on all their other systems because we're really vested in our customer success. We don't just want to sell you lights and turn you loose. Um, we want to make sure that you have uh, all the tools that you need to succeed. You know, one of the things that I've noticed, one of the challenges, um, as a, as a person in the LED industry, a, a salesperson, customer support, is recommending how the single light grower deploys this lighting product, and then also having a different strategy for how the 25 or 125 light grower yeah. deploys. Uh, please don't let me put words in your mouth, but it appears to me like this is a 4x4 light for a 4x4 space, yep. and it's deployed in the same manner whether you're buying one or a hundred. Yeah, I mean, that the idea was that it's, it's fully modular. Right. You know, it's just... You can have four of them, you can have 400 of them, and it's basically the same array. Um, obviously, the more that you put into an area where it's not just a light on its own, but they're deployed side by side, you get a, a contribution component. Like your overall intensity is going to go up if you have more lights in a space versus just one light in a space where you know everything can deploy. I mean, obviously, if you put it in a grow tent and everything's reflected back in, you can get the same result on one light as you're getting with you know, 40. That's important. Yeah. And I try to drive that home on my channel. A gr you know, putting a light in a grow tent, taking PAR measurements and yeah. stuff like that is an accurate representation of what you can expect in a 100 light setup with all these adjacent contributing light sources. Correct. Yeah, a, a grow tent and a, and a warehouse with lots of lights have a similar type of uh, yeah, light deployment. Very cool. Andrew, thank you so much for yeah, your Yeah, I time. appreciate it. It was good you talk. You are truly one of us, one of the lighting nerds, the geek nerds. And I know you guys don't, you know, you guys are making pictures and not DIY, but the fact that you, you are transparent about the spectra that you use, obviously this is a mid-power package somewhere in the 30-30 range or yep. 
something like that. I think it's I think it's cool, man. Uh, the consumers are getting smarter, yeah. uh, whether they're single light or 100 light, and um, that's why I came over here to talk to you, man, because you just uh, deserve to be spotlighted a little bit, and, and people should def definitely check out your lights, and you know, being in that $1,500 price range, adding that extra value of the 700 watts as yep. opposed to the 600 watt range, I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's classy, bro. Oh, I appreciate it. I mean, and we're going to be bringing forward. I mean, this is a big light. It's a big heavy light, um, and it is, is too much in some cases for a home grower. Um, we're bringing forward a line of more uh, consumer-oriented products uh, here right now. We're actually going to be deploying a two-foot by four-foot version of our Bloom Light um, that's going to retail for less than a thousand dollars. So uh, we're trying to create some products that uh, give additional people the opportunity to be involved with the lights. Perfect. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. Have a good day.